Good. Uh, thank you. Nice to see everybody here. Uh, my name is Sunil. Uh, I am uh, with HPE, uh, but my story with Spiffy starts well before HPE. And uh, it's been uh, a minute since I've been uh, really involved in these types of activities. Uh, uh, I used to, uh, early on, be the, the MC of these kinds of events and trying to figure out how you get people to show up to a, uh, a little project when nobody understands what we're talking about and why they should care. And uh, it's, it's amazing to see the growth in the community. It's amazing to see all the contributions. It's amazing to see people's continued investment in this project. So thank you for that. Uh, today, I'm going to take you very quickly uh, through a story, um, at least in terms of the, the genesis of this project. Uh, this will be old news for some of the folks in this room already uh, that have been there with me. But for many of you, it'll be uh, probably brand new. So hopefully, this will give you a sense of where we've come from and where we're going and the things that I think are important to what this community is all about. Okay, so I'm going to take you through that story very, very quickly. Um, my story in particular, and it does start at least with me, because I'm the one up here telling the story, uh, was back in 2016. At 16, I was at a firm called Bessemer. It was an investment firm. We did a lot of uh, venture capital investments. Uh, and before that, I was at Google. Uh, I worked as a product manager in the networking group for Google Cloud. And I spent a lot of time working on some of the networking services that Google Cloud eventually launched and developed. Um, while at Google, I had an opportunity to meet this guy. And he didn't look as crazy as he does in this picture, but he was crazy in so many good ways, right? And in the good ways that I think we all benefit from, our industries benefit from as well. Him, Craig, um, uh, forgetting, uh, he's going to kill me now. Uh, well, the founders of Kubernetes, among others, spent a lot of time thinking about how do you bring to life concepts uh, around distributed systems architecture for everybody that doesn't have a name that sounds like Google, right? And one of those was Spiffy, okay? So back in 2016, for those of you that didn't know, uh, Joe Beta was one of the folks that wrote the first, he drafted the first document, this Google document, uh, that was circulated amongst a small group of people uh, in 2016, okay? And I was one of those folks that uh, got this document. And I was reading through it, and having been a Googler, I, I saw some of the power of the technology that uh, was underpinning this and what was based on this. And, and I, this became uh, the beginnings of, of what I think uh, is an amazing project that provides a pretty foundational and required capability to continue to build the architectures that you see being discussed at conferences like this. This technology was built on top of something inside of Google called LoAS, Low Overhead Authentication System. It's now called ALTS, Application Layer Transport Security. That's the public name for it. But back in the day, it was known as LoAS. And it was one of the most missed pieces of infrastructure for any developer. Ask any Google developer and, and that has left Google, and they will describe LoAS as one of the most interesting, valuable key capabilities uh, that's out there. You've seen at different production identity days and different uh, meetups, uh, Umer and you know Evan and others have used terms like dial tone. That term uh, originated inside of Google when they described the capability like this as dial tone. Right? You don't have to think about how I'm going to wire up my applications to talk to each other. They basically have a registry. They have, you know, kind of uh, attested identities. And then when we need to communicate, we have to communicate over, you know, authenticated encrypted gRPC channels as well. This became the, one of the meaningful pieces of how uh, Spiffy came to be because we learned a lot about what was the benefit of having a separate identity attestation authentication system that wasn't as tightly coupled to the actual applications and services that you were running here. Okay. Now, back in the time when Google was running this system, they had tried all kinds of things. They had tried network-based capabilities to provide similar types of IP-based control points, but for all the reasons that you probably know if you're sitting here in this room, you probably understand why those were not necessarily scaling at the scale of a company like Google. They also went off and tried to do all types of static token and key injection into various systems and servers, all their machines that were out there, but those two had all kinds of constraints in the sense that they were tied to the machines, they weren't necessarily tied to the ephemeral workloads per se. So there was a gap that existed in terms of the ability to be able to scalably provision and deprovision these identities throughout 
uh, Google's infrastructure. So what does any smart engineer do? They typically go back in time and look at their forefathers and mothers and try to get a sense of what was built before that I could be inspired by. And the Googlers did the same thing. They went back to the 80s and they saw that back in the 80s, Bell Laboratories uh, was working on a number of efforts that were pretty interesting and potentially could be useful for addressing these types of problems that they were facing at Google. And one of those things was inside of Plan 9, which was one of their distributed operating systems that they had built back in the 80s. And uh, as part of that, they had built a security subsystem in there called Factotum. And Factotum began to exhibit many of the characteristics of being able to have a decentralized way of being able to continuously provide some level of verification for every file that was communicating with every other file in the Unix-based distributed operating system. And so it's no surprise that, you know, as Google thought about its challenges and where it was going to go as it continued to scale, that the authors of this paper, Russ Cox, Eric Gross, Rob Pike, Dave Prasado, Sean Quinlan, they all found their way over to Google. So this is by no mistake. Right? These ideas come from looking at what we've done beforehand. And I think in some ways what you're seeing with LOAS and ALTS is or was one of the first production implementations of some of these crazy ideas by these crazy computer scientists who we all have lots to give thanks for. So that became the backstory for how and why we decided to actually, or why Joe decided to bring this idea out into the world and then bring a group of people around him, including myself. In 2016, we went forward and we continued to build a small community, okay? And it was myself, Joe, and a number of folks in this room in the early days in 2016 uh, that you'll see. This includes folks from Google on the Istio team, Cisco, or before it was Istio, Cisco, Netflix, Twilio, Salesforce, Twitter, and J.P. Morgan Chase. This was spiffy meetup number one uh, at Twilio or at Netflix's HQ down in Los Gatos. California. Small group, seven people, eight people, very different than what we have here today. And I'm very grateful for that because it meant that we were doing something right. We were thinking about this the right way. This became the beginnings of our little community, right? And it went so far to eventually have me decide to go form a company called Sightail, which many of you know, many of you were part of Sightail as well. And this became the company that was really materially driving a lot of the engagement from 2017 and on. In fact, when we started Sightail in Q1 of 2017, we were still talking about Spiffy and Spire. We had barely gotten a sense of what it was. No code had been written at this point, I don't think. Evan Gilman hadn't joined. We didn't even have a team together, but we had a design document of what we might want to do. And so we were really thrust into the spotlight when the Istio team decided to include a little reference to Spiffy and Spire in the 0.1 announcement of the original launch of the Istio service mesh offering. So down underneath the fold, you'll see them making a call out to the Spiffy capabilities because it was fundamental to how they wanted to be able to think about how, what was the mechanism to provision identity to the workloads that were going to be managed by the Istio mesh as a whole. This was huge for our community, right? Huge for a group of seven, eight people sitting in a room together, and then all of a sudden Google gets up on stage and talks about this project that's barely off the ground and running. And that was really, I think, what kicked things off for us. As we continued forward in time, we eventually got to the point where we got a folk, group of folks together and we made our submission uh, in November of 2017 uh, to the CNCF. It was a long process. It was a very different process than I understand it is today, uh, which is a sign of the growth and, and prosperity of the CNCF and the open source community as a whole. But this became kind of the watershed moment for our project, or one of the watershed moments for our project, because it allowed for us to actually go forward from being an idea to it being something that had the backing of an organization that had the kind of principles that we also espouse in our community as well. This was amazing for us. We continue to, you know, Enjoy that. We, we spent quite a bit of time, you know, at the following KubeCon, uh, which was in December of 2017 in Austin, uh, where it snowed in Austin, actually, for those of you that were there. It was kind of ludicrous to see snow in Austin, Texas. Um, it was a great, great conference for us. It was a great party for us because it was an opportunity for everybody to understand a little bit more about who and what we were. And that eventually, a few months later, led to the CNCF hosting our Spiffy project. Now, this is our story. This is our origin story for our project, right? But our story is built on the stories of others. 
those of you that are here in this community now, this is now your story. And you're going to continue to carry that forward. And my, my goal here in this presentation was to give you a sense of where we've come from. And so you know where we're trying to get to. We have a community that is open, that is friendly, that is curious, that um, doesn't take no for an answer, which I love. And I think that is what drives us forward and is what has allowed for this community to continue to thrive and grow in the way that it has over the last four years. And as you continue to be engaged in this community, we expect, I expect you to be the same. I expect you to say, I don't know how to do things. I expect you to say, I need help with things uh, because that's what this community is designed to do. It is not one where everybody just knows what's happening. If it was, this would have been said and done a long time ago. Engage, participate, offer, be vulnerable in this community because it's a community that will, will honor that and will respect that very, very much so. So with that, I'll say thank you for your time. Thank you for your commitment. If you want to connect with me, that's my QR code. For those of you at home as well, you can just scan that and uh, I'll see you on LinkedIn. All right, thank you.